So what's up guys? Um, so this video that I'm doing, I'm going to basically talk about my experience with the Tackle app. And I did a round with this video like last week, didn't upload it because I was kind of waiting for the appropriate time to put it out. And certain incidents happened where I figured I had more to say to it, and not only that, I've had it chance to calm down, talk to the people at Tackle, and just in general, come to my senses a little bit. So, essentially, um, my issue, my, I started working with Tackle as a provider, let me try to get any signatures out of the way, I started working with Tackle about, oh, a month or so ago, seemed like an easy way to make some honest money, you know, and like a lot of people, I fall for easily for those, you know, do-it-yourself sort of apps. So, my first incident, at first it seemed like it was great, you know, making some money, but soon enough, you know, I fell into the whole thing where people were just really rude, like Tackle goes through an extensive uh, check, kind of like Lyft does, in trying to, you know, provide the best, well, providers, but they don't really do that with their customers, and there's just some customers out there that can be really, you know, rude, or basically, you know, give the impression that the work that they want done is no big deal, and then you get there, and it's just a disaster. It's just, you know, you're weighing over your head. Now, ultimately what hap what also happens is that if your certain rating plummets down even a tenth of a percent uh, of a percentage of a percentile, you're punished with it by your account being deactivated and there's a review process, you may get your app renewed, whatever doesn't happen when the, when the customer does it, but as a provider, you're held to a higher standard. See, personally, I don't agree with that. You know, I think that both should be held to a higher standard and that there should also be some sort of, you know, penalty for the customer if they cancel on you or whatever. Um, you know, because the way that I know it, I mean, is, I hate to use Uber as an example, but at least Uber has a higher standard on that. Secondly, my um, fiance ended up being with the app for a while and she suffered kind of a similar incident where uh, she ended up canceling on a customer because there was a job that came up that, you know, frankly was a better opportunity. And, you know, because of the times that conflicted, she couldn't, you know, her tackle app got disabled, which was kind of inconvenient because it's like, Tackle would be a good way to make extra money. So they disabled her account and as far as I know have never re-enabled it. And I kind of find that to be a little bit, you know, a little bit dishonest by Tackle and a little bit contradictory considering once again they, you know, she's allowed to cancel, she's not allowed to cancel on a customer, you know, for something for a better opportunity that comes up, but a customer can cancel on her without any penalty. My other issue that I had with Tackle is I've had a couple instances with customers, and one lady in particular, um, I ended up doing some cleaning work for her, and she was not satisfied with the work, despite that I did everything that she asked. And once I... Um, I had completed the chore, I ended up getting uh, contacted by her and then later by Tackle Support, you know, saying that there would be a dispute with the work because ultimately there was something else she wanted done that she neither mentioned nor did we agree, nor was agreed upon in the original work, which I would have done if I had had the proper tools and had she notified me in advance. I mean, ultimately, Tackle sided with me in that last incident, but the point was is that, you know, a week after doing that, I had to wait for my payment, 
which shouldn't have taken longer than a couple of days due to this dispute and the fact that, you know, everything got thrown up in the air for me. Ultimately, it's just the fact that I think that in a lot of ways, Tackle really needs to reevaluate the people not only that work for them, but the people that request work from them. I really think that there needs to be a better screening process and stuff like that for the people that ask for the services, not to discriminate or against anybody or anything, but ultimately do better screening. One, because there's just people that are downright rude, but that's beside the point. It would also just protect the people going to those jobs because you don't know what type of people you're walking into. And that's always been a concern, I think, for some tackle providers. So it's kind of one of those things that it's not just a whole thing of protecting the customers from the people that go to clean their houses and everything because that's why there's a screening for the providers. But there also needs to be screening for the people that are going to be part of the tackle uh, community as customers only. So I think that, that would better the network. Now, okay, printer decides to go in ghost mode. So anyway, I just kind of had, have had a lot of negative feelings towards Tackle, and ultimately I think there's a lot of ways that can better their service. And it's just one of those things where I think if anybody is looking for certain services, you know, Tackle's, Tackle is good and it has the potential to be better, but ultimately if, there, if it's a big job, big job, you're better off hiring hiring professionals because tackle can, not to say tackle doesn't have professionals in it but it's a service that anybody with a clean record can you know get into it and ultimately there are some people that may not know completely what they're doing and get in way over their head because it's not the jobs aren't necessarily specified and there's some jobs on there that I've seen that are like handyman work that really would, I would say, require some professional work, not a tackle service. And I mean, I'm not just speaking on tackle. I speak on any of these, you know, money-making apps and stuff like that. You know, you go into it with your own risks and rewards, but ultimately you're better doing your research and, you know, and using, using your own conscience and better judgment. So... That's what I wanted to say on that. So, I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. <laughs>